In July 2016, after the sexual assault and murder of Kaylee Sawyer, former campus security officer Edwin Lara dialed 911 to turn himself in after kidnapping and terrorizing another woman for 10 hours. He forced her to accompany him from Oregon to California. It all began on July 23, 2016, in Bend, Oregon, when 23-year-old Kaylee Sawyer attended a friend's bachelorette party. The group went to several bars in downtown Bend, and at one point, Kaylee began dancing with another man. One of the friends at the bar texted Kaylee's boyfriend and told him what was going on. Kaylee and her boyfriend began arguing, and what seemed like a frivolous night of fun quickly became more serious. At midnight on July 24, as the night's activities wound down, Kaylee asked her boyfriend to pick her up as she was too inebriated to drive. The pair began arguing almost immediately, and as they reached their apartment complex, the argument became more heated. Kaylee's boyfriend was enraged, and left Kaylee crying in the car, but came back out ten minutes later to try and coax her inside. But as he approached the car, he saw that Kaylee was no longer there, and the passenger side door had been left open. He texted Kaylee, who responded that her phone was about to die. Despite his pleas for her to return, she refused and stopped answering. Hours passed, and no one could get hold of Kaylee. Eventually, her boyfriend called the police to report her missing. Kaylee had last been seen in the parking lot of the apartment complex in College Way, close to Central Oregon Community College, and had made her way on foot from there. Hundreds of volunteers searched for Kaylee, and her boyfriend was interviewed but was not considered a suspect. Her friends were also questioned, but there were no leads in what had happened to her. It was as if she had vanished into thin air. Officials resorted to tracking her phone, which had pinged several times across Bend. However, it was later revealed that it was Kaylee's old iPhone that was still registered in her name and was of no help to the investigation. But something surprising would occur just 24 hours after Kaylee's disappearance. A police officer named Isabel Lara contacted authorities to tell them that her husband had been acting very strangely following the news of Kaylee's disappearance. She reported that her husband, 31-year-old Edwin Lara, had come home late that Sunday and told her something disturbing. She claimed that he was very quiet and withdrawn when he returned home and the couple went to church. Afterward, she asked what was wrong, and he eventually confessed the next day that he had killed a woman after hitting her with his campus patrol car. Edwin told his wife that he panicked and hid the body. He also stated that he had stored some of Kaylee's belongings in the shed. After his confession, he fled the house armed with a gun. But his story didn't quite make sense. If it had been an accident, why not simply call an ambulance and report it? Why hide the body? After Isabel saw the news about Kaylee's disappearance, she immediately went to the authorities. Officers went to the home and found Kaylee's purse, shoes, a blood-stained rock, and a clump of her hair. It certainly didn't seem accidental, but rather a violent and brutal assault. By then, Edwin was on the run. He had left his car at his parents' house and spotted 19-year-old Andrea Mays sitting in her car. He opened the passenger side door and pointed the gun at her. He ordered her to drive and the pair took off. As they drove, Edwin told Andrea about Kaylee and the mess he had seemingly gotten himself into. Eventually, after about three hours, they stopped at a motel where Edwin made Andrea pretend to be his girlfriend while they checked in. Once inside the room, he handcuffed her to the bathroom door while he took a shower. After he was done, he ordered her to take a shower in front of him. But Andrea refused and instead, Edwin handcuffed her to the bed. Andrea was afraid that Edwin was planning on sexually assaulting her, so she quickly came up with a story, telling him she had an STD and the alarm on her phone was to remind her to take her medication. Luckily, Edwin believed her. His paranoia was growing and so, he decided to take Andrea and leave the motel at roughly half past one in the morning. The pair drove through the dark until they stopped at another motel at 5 a.m. after Andrea's car began giving him trouble. Edwin got out of the car and walked over to a 73-year-old man who was sitting in his vehicle. He tried to steal the car and shot the man in the stomach. But he was unable to take the car, and he and Andrea fled on foot to a nearby gas station where Edwin carjacked a 76-year-old woman and her two teen grandsons. Edwin forced one of the teens to drive at gunpoint, telling his victims all about his urge to kill before he eventually agreed to drop the family on the side of the road. Then, he and Andrea continued their harrowing journey. 
He forced Andrea to continue driving while he filmed a video of himself apologizing for his actions. He referred to Kaylee as that girl and stated that Andrea was fine. He also said that he regretted killing Kaylee and that he killed her because she kept screaming. After he was done, he made Andrea post the video to Facebook, titling it Murderer on the Loose. Before dialing 911 at 6.40 a.m., Edwin called several family members and alerted them as to what was going on. After a high-speed chase with the highway patrol, Edwin eventually pulled the car over and stepped out of the vehicle with his hands up and he was promptly handcuffed and arrested. Initially, Andrea was also arrested until police realized that she too was a victim. While in custody, Edwin told officers the same story he had told his wife but added that he had strangled Kaylee when she wouldn't stop screaming. At that point, Kaylee's body was still missing. Edwin agreed to draw the exact location of Kaylee's remains and elaborated on what had gone on that evening. After speeding through the streets, he claimed he had hit Kaylee, who was allegedly very drunk and wearing all black, making her visibility difficult. When she began to scream, Edwin claimed he strangled her until she stopped breathing and then undressed her and dumped her in a ditch. He claimed he went back to the scene and moved her body after he realized news had spread of her disappearance. It was only after some convincing from detectives by way of appealing to Edwin's religious ideology that he eventually agreed to come clean and admit there was intent to harm from the moment he saw Kaylee. He had seen Kaylee leave her boyfriend's car and began following her in his patrol vehicle. Eventually, he caught up with her. He also admitted that at that point, he was also planning on sexually assaulting her and silencing her forever. It is unknown how Edwin managed to convince Kaylee to enter the back of his car but for some reason, possibly because he was a security guard, she felt safe enough to do so. Edwin trapped her inside, locking all the doors. He demanded to have sex with her. When she refused, he strangled her. He drove her several miles out where he strangled her again and hit her over the head with a rock before he raped her. After he was done, Kaylee was still breathing, so he hit her again. He left Kaylee there, driving back to the college campus where he changed cars, returning to dispose of Kaylee's body a few hours later. Officers located the car Edwin had been driving when he fled the scene and found some handwritten notes. One expressed remorse for the killing and another pointed to the location of Kaylee's body near a canyon off Highway 126. There, Kaylee's body lay and the tragic case came to an end. At his trial, Edwin pleaded not guilty and his team claimed his rights had been violated while being held in custody. During a pre-trial hearing, a judge threw out his confession stating it could not be used as evidence. While the defense claimed Edwin had a cognitive disability, the prosecution claimed that there was no doubt that he was a potential serial killer. It was in January 2018 that Edwin accepted a plea deal and pled guilty to aggravated murder and robbery to avoid the death penalty. Edwin did not plead guilty to sexual assault. However, if the prosecution pushed for a sexual assault conviction in addition to a sentence of life imprisonment for murder, it could complicate the case, and so the charges were discarded. Edwin received a life sentence for Kaylee's murder and a second life sentence for the kidnapping of Andrea Mays. At his sentencing, Edwin Lara addressed the court. In an emotional statement, he asked for forgiveness and begged for prayers. He also said a prayer before the court, asking for healing for the community. In the aftermath, Edwin's wife, Isabel filed for divorce and resigned from her position as a police officer, unable to bear the weight of what her ex-husband had done. Kaylee's family filed a lawsuit against the college, alleging they had failed to do a proper background check on Edwin, as well as failing to act after one woman reported him after Edwin had pinned her against a wall. One of the additional grievances was that the campus patrol cars looked indistinguishable from those of law enforcement and that was why Edwin was able to lull Kaylee into a false sense of security. The case was settled for $2 million. The harrowing details of Kaylee Sawyer's final moments, coupled with his terrifying abduction of Andrea Mays, painted a picture of a man consumed by darkness. Despite his plea for forgiveness and prayers, Lara's actions left a trail of devastation in its wake.